Hi, this is your teacher, Barbara Rademacher, and we're going to talk about polynomial inequalities. The most important thing for you to know is that this code over here, less than zero or even less than equal to zero, greater than, greater than zero, all refers to above or below the x-axis. All we're going to do is graph the polynomial over here. Now this one is already factored for you, but most of them aren't. We're going to graph the polynomial over here and look at where the graph is below the x-axis. It's that easy. So let's start. I'm going to go to y equals and I am going to write down what I see, parentheses, x minus 4, parentheses closed, parentheses open, x plus 1, parentheses closed. Now I'm going to graph. Okay, and I'm going to make the graph bigger by using what's called a detached LCD. Here it is. Okay, now we're looking for where is the graph below the x-axis. Well, the graph is below the x-axis here. And when we say where is the graph below the x-axis, we're talking about the street address. That is where on the x-axis. Between what numbers on the x-axis is the graph below the x-axis? Well, if we look up here at the factors, remember if you set each factor equal to zero and solve for x, our two x-intercepts are going to be 4, 0 and negative 1, 0. And so I would say that between negative 1 and positive 4 on the x-axis, the graph is below the x-axis, and it's strictly below. It's not touching the x-axis, it's strictly below the x-axis between negative 1 and 4, and so I'll be using parentheses. And I'll choose a point, and I will say between negative 1 and positive 4. And I'm going to check my answer, and I'm told I did well, and so I'm going to move on to number 33. We have a polynomial on the left, which is not factored, no problem. And we have this code, which means we're looking for where is it above the x-axis. So let's go look. I'm going to clear that, and I'm going to type in x squared minus 14x plus 45, and I'm going to graph that. And we're looking for above the x-axis. So I'm going to move the window over, um, over to the right. I had to stop and check my message. I like to throw history into my, um, into my videos and this is the day when we're supposed to have an answer. Will the House of Representatives and the United States Senate reach an agreement so that the government shutdown will end and default won't begin tomorrow on Thursday? All of us are waiting with bated breath. Nobody knows anything yet. All right, because it's 1045 AM Central Time, let us move along. I'm going to move my window over to the right. So my x min will be negative 5, but I'm going to change my x max to 15. Let's see if that is sufficient. Yeah, that's a little better. Now, it looks for all the world like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. All right. Um, the graph is going to be above the x-axis to the left of 5 and to the right of this x-intercept. Let's see what it is. 6, 7, 8, 9. Is that what it looks like to you? 9 and to the right. So I'm going to come over here 
and I'm going to say negative infinity to 5 and then I'm going to move to the right I'm going to choose union then I'm going to choose um, th this interval notation with parentheses because this is a strict inequality um, and then I'm going to say from 9 to infinity now notice I didn't factor now I could be wrong so be prepared it might be like 4.9 or something so let's see ah good it let us eyeball it alright this is where the graph is above the x-axis that is to the left of 5 and to the right of 9 but not including 5 or 9 because those are the actual x-intercepts where the graph actually touches the x-axis where the graph actually equals 0 and there is no equals bar under here let's move on to the next one aha this is where it gets tricky. We see x squared minus x minus 24 is greater than or equal to x minus 9. There is a way to do it like that, but I say, why make life hard for ourselves? I'm going to hit delete. No, I'm not. I'm going to hit clear. Dumb. Okay. So, now I'm going to pull over my writing sheet and I'm going to write. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a zero over here. To do that, I'll have to subtract x from both sides and I will have to add 9 to both sides. So I'll have x squared, whoop, there we go, x squared minus x minus 24 minus another x plus 9 is greater than or equal to 0. That means we're going to be using brackets and we're going to be including the x-intercepts. Okay, this will give me x squared minus 2x. Now we've got minus 24 plus 9. This will be minus 15 is greater than or equal to zero. Let's graph that. x squared minus 2x minus 15. Graph. Whoa, I don't even have to move my um, uh, my window. All right, this graph is going to be above the x-axis to the left of, they still appear to be letting us eyeball this, to the left of negative 3, but this time it's going to actually include negative 3. So what I see is negative infinity to negative 3 is one area of the x-axis where the graph is above the x-axis and then over or on yes or on the x-axis and then over here one two three four five now I'm taking a chance by not factoring so be aware of that um, one two three four five and it appears to also be bracket five to positive infinity and I'll put a u between them and I'll see if I am correct all right, I'm going to click here, and I'm going to look for more, and I'm going to look and see, ah, okay, I have a bracket, although there's one on my keyboard. But what the heck, let's use this. I'll have bracket, and ne negative infinity, comma, uh, what did we say? Negative 3. Oh, darn. Never, ever put a bracket around uh, an, an infinity sign. Here we go. All right, then, right, 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 right. I'm going to put a bracket, and then I'm going to put a U, 
and then I'm going to put a bracket and I'm going to say 5 to infinity. So 5 comma positive infinity parenthesis. There we go. Let's see if this is correct. Yes. Eventually, you know, we're going to have to factor this. There's no way around it. Here we have x squared is greater than 81. What to do? Pull the 81 over. Okay, so we'll have x squared minus 81 is greater than or equal to 0. Let's write under here. x squared is greater than 81. Oop, 81. So I'm going to subtract 81 from both sides of the inequality. That will give me x squared minus 81 is greater than 0. I can factor that. This would just be factored by the difference of two squares. x plus 9 times x minus 9 is greater than 0. Set each factor equal to 0. x plus 9 equals 0. x minus 9 equals 0. And so we'll have the answers x equals negative 9, x equals positive 9, those are the zeros of the function. But right now, of course, I could graph this, and I'm going to. But we are going to have to radically change the window. x squared minus 81. Now, I'm, I know that 81 is way up there, but let's see. Let's see, I am going to zoom 6 to get a centered screen again. There we go. Okay. Now, you know that this is a parabola, and it's a cupped up parabola. But I am going to uh, move out a little bit. How about that? Let's just move out a little bit. We'll say negative 20 to positive 20. Let's see if that's better. Just to see a little better. Okay, and I'm not going to go all the way down where this loops around and comes back up. What we're looking for is where is the graph above the x-axis? So it's going to be above the x-axis to the left of negative 9 and to the right of positive 9. But notice that there is no equals to bar, so we're not actually including negative 9 and positive 9 in our answer. Okay, click on the answer box. Uh, there we go. So I'll have negative infinity and then negative 9. Move to the right, union and then parentheses again, positive 9 to positive infinity. I'll check my answer, and I'm correct. So you're getting the idea of how this works, although we've had all quadratics so far.